This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the second lecture working through the uh, chapter 15 on pricing of the SEMA P2. In the last lecture, I went through the tabular approach to theoretical or economic pricing, finding what selling price gave the maximum profit. And the exercise itself was actually pretty quick. It was just multiplying, work out the profit in each case. But I did talk about that marginal revenue, marginal cost business. And the reason was, if you now look at exercise five, we've got the same sort of problem, but this time, instead of doing it in a tabular form and being limited as we were, to selling prices of only 16, 15.5, 15, when I said, why not 15.4, 15.3, and so on. This time, we're going to do effectively the same thing, but to do it algebraically. And so have a look at exercise five, Oggy. Oggy manufactures an item G, which has an estimated demand curve of P equals 300 minus 0.004 Q. And you know what that means. We dealt with that earlier, how we could arrive at that equation. Here it's been given us. And it does assume that as uh, we reduce the selling price, demand goes up, but that it's linear. We're also told that the variable or marginal cost is $40 a unit. Here the, the cost per unit does stay fixed, however many units we produce. And our job is to find what would the selling price be to get maximum profit. Now, I will tell you in a minute what to learn. You, you know, you can just follow rules, and this is actually very quick indeed. But I'm not prepared to simply give a rule without some sort of explanation. And this is why I went through the marginal revenue, marginal cost bit. You see, what did I do when I had the table? We had the selling price per unit, and we then worked out total revenue. And so the total revenue surely we multiplied the selling price per unit P by the demand Q. Well here I know that the uh, re uh, uh, selling price P is 300 minus 0.004 Q and if we multiply every term by Q we get 300 Q minus 0.004 Q squared. And what's going to happen to the revenue? Let me draw a little graph. But remember, this isn't something to worry about. I just want to make sense of what's coming. If I had a little graph of what would happen to the revenue, as the demand changed, well, of course, if we sold no units at all, the revenue would be zero. But as our learners look back at uh, what you did for the tabular one, exercise four, we saw that if you drop the selling price, therefore we sell more, what happened was the revenue increased, but it increased at a lower rate. And in fact, it would end up decreasing, whoops, uh, because there come a time when you drop the selling price down to zero. And of course, the selling price is zero, total revenue zero. So the revenue would look something like that. The costs, the costs would look something like this. The total cost, it's $40 a unit. 
So no units, no cost. More units, more cost. And the profit in each case is the difference between the excess of the revenue over the cost. And what we did last time, we worked out the profit at each level. And we said, if we drop the selling price, so we sold more, we looked at the extra profit, the marginal, sorry, the extra revenue, the marginal revenue. And we said, if the extra revenue is more than extra cost, the profit will increase, and that's good. But if you got to the stage where the extra revenue is less than the extra cost, the profit would fall, and that's bad. And so we go all the way along saying, oh, how much extra revenue, how much extra cost? But once you get to the stage where the extra revenue equals the extra cost, then you'll have reached maximum profit. And that's what effectively we did in that previous example. I kept working out the extra revenue. If it was more than extra cost, it's worth doing. If it's less than extra cost, it's not worth doing. We do the same here. We know the total revenue. We work out the marginal revenue. Now in a minute, I'll give you a formula for this. But I think most of you will have done differentiation at some time in your life. And if we know the equation for revenue, the marginal revenue, how much extra revenue for a bit extra Q, you differentiate this equation. And 300 Q, you multiply by the power and drop the power by one, it differentiates to 300 minus, uh, multiply by the power, so two times 0.004 is 0 0.008, drop the power by one Q. Now, if that frightens you, don't worry. I told you why I was doing this. You can simply learn the fact that the margin, we, we know how to get a price demand equation. Um, in this case, we were given it, sorry, in general terms, it's A minus BQ. The equation for the marginal revenue or MR, is A minus 2BQ, where A and B are the same as in the price demand equation. So you can forget that last bit about the graph, although I hope it will have helped some of you. Uh, look back at the question. We told the demand curve, so we know A is 300 and B is 0 0.004. And therefore, the marginal revenue, A, 300, 2 times B is 0 0.004, so minus 0 0.008Q. Well, as I, I think I've explained enough already, um, the maximum profit is when marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We know the marginal revenue, the equation is 300 minus 0 0.008Q. Marginal cost is the variable cost, the cost of each extra unit. And the variable cost in exercise 5 is 40. And so now it's a bit of simple algebra. Subtract 40 from both sides, 300 minus 40 is 260, add 0 0.008 to both sides, 0 0.008Q. Q is therefore 260 over 0 0.008, which is 32,500. However, we've not quite answered it. Maximum profit will be when Q, when the demand is 32,500. But it wants to know what the selling price should be. And of course, 
we can have any demand we like, depending on the selling price we fix. But it's now easy. We know, do we not, from the question, that the price is going to be 300 minus 0.004Q. Uh, if Q is 32,500, it's 300 minus 32,500 times 0 0.004. One at seventy. If we have a selling price of one hundred and seventy, we'll sell at thirty-two thousand five hundred units, and that will give us maximum profit. We could charge a higher price, but we'd sell less. We could charge a lower price, we'd sell more. But maximum profit will be if we sell at one seventy. So there we are. Uh, the next paragraph mentions price uh, uh, elasticity of demand. I'm not actually going to do that because, uh, quite frankly, and he's written there, there's just one little formula to learn. I think it's very obvious. And you can check the answer to the exercise at the back of the notes. However, uh, I will chat briefly about the last page, but because that is something slightly separate pricing strategies, I'll stop this lecture here, then we'll have one last lecture going through pricing strategies.